Hi guys, I'm Kesha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times to discuss movies and horror. And today I'm here to talk to you about bones and all. It's coffee time. So when I heard about Bones and All, I was excited because I knew the director from Suspiria and Call Me By Your Name and other movies that I've really enjoyed. So I was really excited to see what he did with this new one. Also, since Timothée Chalamet was also going to be in it and I really do like him as an actor. So the moment that it was available here in the cinema, I went and watched it. It is marketed as an art house film, so you already kind of know what you're getting yourself into. And we're going to talk about the movie today. We're going to discuss it spoiler free. This movie has been described as a horror romantic road trip and I kind of agree with that description because that is exactly what you're going to get when you go see it. I would say it's more of a drama romantic movie than a horror per se but of course there's horror aspects of the movie and there was a particular scene where two people left the cinema and they just left the room. <laughs> And I kind of understand because this movie is a lot more brutal than you would expect. I mean, basically, the movie is following Taylor Russell and Timothy Chalamet's characters. They are two young cannibals that are going on a road trip. That is basically what you're getting. So you can imagine when you hear the word cannibals, what you can expect to see in this film. Love blossoms between a young woman and a drifter as they embark on a 3,000 mile odyssey through the back roads of America. However, despite their best efforts, all roads lead back to their terrifying past and a final stand that will determine whether their love can survive their differences. Now, this movie is very character driven. On the one side, we have Marin. Marin has grown up a little bit alone with her father, and her father is overly protective of Marin because he knows her secret. Marin is an eater, which means she has this desperate need of eating human flesh. Now, her father has tried to keep her as a normal kid, let her go to school, kind of keep her secret quiet. But as Marin gets older, it is a little bit harder for her father to control it. In some aspects, this movie even reminded me of Let the Right One In, because we have here a kid that is coming to terms with what they are, and we have a parent that they don't know exactly what to do, but they do want to still protect their kid, even though the kid might be doing things that are considered not normal. But Marin now finds herself kind of alone, trying to look for her mother. She's looking for her birth mother, trying to find her, and trying to come to terms to who she is and why she is the way she is. She's just looking for answers. So it is also kind of a coming of age, typical teenage angst story, in a way, just with cannibals. This is a story that comes from a young adult book. So the main character, Marin, is kind of like that typical hero in your YA book, in your young adult book, but she's also someone that is kind of like a misfit, somebody that is not really understood, and we're going to follow her through an amazing journey of self-discovery. So while she's looking for her mother, Marin discovers found family in Lee. Lee is kind of like the heartthrob of this film, is the guy that she falls in love with when she meets him, and they realize that they have a lot in common because Lee is also an eater. So they are in such different spectrums of their lives. So their relationship is really interesting. So Lee has already accepted who he is and embraces it and doesn't really ask many questions. He has just accepted what he is, whilst Marin is still kind of fighting against it and still trying to look for questions and answers. And um, they have such a good dynamic. I feel like they both learn so much from each other as characters and it is so interesting to see them interact. At the end of the day, our characters, our two main characters are doing sometimes things that are questionable, <laughs> things that might be horrifying to a lot of people, but the director manages to still make you love them and care for them as a viewer even though the things they might be doing are not okay, <laughs> but you still feel for them because you understand their struggles and they are just teenagers and they are so young and they have been thrown into this world of eaters and it's such a wonderful thing because as characters and as the world that they live in, it feels so realistic, it feels so real that it could happen anywhere, anytime, almost like in their own universe 
and I just absolutely loved it. The backdrop of Bones and All is basically the 1980s and you're going to see so many amazing cinematography on the movie, especially deserted America uh, places and it is just so wonderful. I really enjoyed how the movie was shot. I thought that everything was really spot on, all the different locations. It felt at times almost like a deserted end of the world scenario, even though we are just in regular 1980s. There is a lot of atmosphere and there is a lot of warm colors in the film, which you might not expect because this movie is quite cold blooded at times. And it was so good to see the whole journey, how we start, um, how things change once Marin meets Lee and how their journey is kind of always changing but they always come to the same conclusion and is that they are eaters and that is something that they cannot change about themselves. We have here conflicted lovers, they love each other a lot but they are also aware that the things that they are doing are probably not going to allow them to have a normal life. I mean at its core this is a movie about teenager runaways on a road trip but it is more than that. There is a lot of violence in the film but there is a lot of love as well. As a tale of love and self-discovery, it did remind me at times, like I said, of Let the Right One In, but also a little bit of Interview with the Vampire and movies like that. Um, and it was such an interesting mix of genres that we get to see in this film. There is a big metaphor um, about how parents, families and friends enable aberrant behavior until it feels normal and how being protected from the world can make it hard to properly enter it. When it comes to the horror, this is not like a standard horror movie or anything like that. There isn't like jump scares or creepy eerie atmosphere. The horror here in this movie is obviously the cannibalism part of it, so expect to see a lot of raw, blunt, gore moments in the film. And I feel like it's part of that brutality that a lot of people could not take in the cinema. I do feel like the two people that walked out, they walked out in the middle of a cannibalistic scene and I feel like they were just not ready for it. Um, but just putting it out there in case you're also a little bit sensitive when it comes to that. Our characters are almost turning animalistic when they have this desire, this desire to feed as eaters as they are. Um, and it also is bringing up all of the questions, you know, it is okay to feed on someone that is a bad person or should you just, you know, pick random people, people that are about to die, people that are alone. Like, is it ever okay <laughs> to kill someone? Um, to feed on them. It's all of these questions that you might expect from such a film and I feel like the way they navigate all of these questions is really smart. This is a gory movie that has kind of also sprinkled here and there your typical horror elements but at its core it's still more a romantic road trip movie so for horror fans don't expect a lot of the horror everywhere all the time. At its core it's really a romantic teenage road trip. I ended up giving this movie a 4.5 out of 5 which is really high for me because I feel like the way this movie was done was absolutely stunning. The cinematography, the acting, the characters, the way that the story was told, all the different layers of meanings and uh, metaphors that they're bringing. I just enjoyed it so much. From beginning to end I had such a wide range of emotions. I went through a lot of things. <laughs> And I was never bored, not even one second, even though the pacing might have been slower than other movies. But I just feel like it was such a good representation of coming of age, teenage angst, first love. But on a world where cannibalism is a thing and there are these people called the eaters that they cannot control themselves. They just have this need to feed in order to survive. So it's almost like an animalistic kind of feeling that they have. In a way, this is a movie that it feeds also from all the previous director's films, um, all into one. And I just love how he merged all of these different genres and ideas together. It's not something easy to do when you take different genres and tones and put it all in one movie. Most times it ends up backfiring, so I feel like he did such an amazing job. I would say if you have the chance to watch this in the cinema, I know not all cinemas everywhere has art have art house movies, um, but I would recommend you definitely to go and check it out. It is worth your time unless you really absolutely cannot take any gore at all whatsoever, then maybe not. But 
this was such a good movie. It's probably one of the best things that I have seen in 2022. Um, so I'm glad that I still managed to watch it before I go on holidays. All right, guys, so this was my spoiler-free review of Bones and All. Let me know down below what you thought about it, if you've watched it already, if you haven't seen it, do you plan on watching it? Let's talk about it in the comments. Thank you guys as always so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in our next coffee time. Bye!